Welcome back to Good Morning Vale. Peter Sunnison has stopped by. He's the Community Outreach Coordinator for the Walkie Mountain Science Center. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Tell everybody just quickly what is the Walkie Mountain Science Center. So Walkie Mountains, we're a 501c3 not-for-profit natural science and sustainability organization. So we focus on everything sustainable, everything environmental. You know, we take folks outside. Um, we're in homes looking at energy efficiencies. We are kind of the one-stop shop for sustainability and natural science in the Eagle Valley. And you have programs with school kids, you have programs with adults, and your main campus is in Avon, but you have a couple little satellite locations as well. Correct. So we're, you know, we're centered out of Avon. We also operate the Nature Discovery Center up top of Vail Mountain in the Vail Nature Center. Those are both closed for the season right now. We're kind of in that transition period. So if folks are looking to get out and looking to get off the mountain, new activity, stop by our Avon campus. Uh, we do a free nature walk every day at 2 o'clock. Free admission to come check out the facility. Um, kind of a great place to stop and kill an hour or two. Yeah, I know you guys were doing snowshoe tours, you do walks. I've actually been to classes at the, the Walking Mountain Science Center, like on meteorology, and the kids, of course, have done a number of things through the schools. So it's springtime, things are starting to change, things are starting to thaw, grass is starting to come out, and so are some of the animals. So are the critters, and you know, we're gonna start to hear, we haven't heard too much about it so far this season, but we are gonna start hearing about the animals that have overwintered here in Eagle Valley, in the Eagle Valley, and are coming out and are looking for food. So this is the time of year to bring in those bird feeders, the bears are waking up, bring in the bird feeders, the birds are gonna be fine. Um, this is when seeds start to appear. So we're really talking about conscientious interactions with wildlife and doing what we can can do to make their lives in this springtime, which is kind of the tricky time for them, easiest. So who are some of the animals we need to really be on the lookout for? So a lot of animals are going to be having their young this time of year. So one of kind of a main um, point that we want to make is that any animal with young, whether it be um, deer, elk, bear, mountain lion, hopefully not, um, any kind of mother and young situation, we're going to want to give them plenty of space, remove ourselves from that situation, because that is the one time that animals are going to get defensive and kind of, you know, look at us as a potential problem. Um, bears, of course, are going to be waking up. Um, they're not true hibernators, so we don't technically say they're coming out of hibernation, but they are waking up. They're going to be hungry, and this is also when we see the bears tend to come down into our garbage cans and um, look for the easiest food. There also are trail closures that you probably want us to respect because this is areas where deer or, or elk are calving, right? That's, also, that, that's exactly right. So there are a lot of trail closures that are going to go into effect here coming up in the next week or so. Um, till early June-ish, late May, and they are for a host of reasons. So um, one is important winter habitat for the, for the animals and their young. Um, we want to give them space to graze, get that kind of first layer of food going for the spring. Um, the other big reason we want to stay off the trails in this area is mud. Um, obviously, if we're out hiking, biking now this time of year, we're going to rut out those trails um, and cause some damage. So it's kind of twofold at this early springtime uh, time period where we want to uh, really respect trail closures, one for wildlife habitat, um, respect their space, and then also is to um, the sustainability of our trails. We want to be able to use those hiking and biking trails come later in the summer so we can do what we do what we can now to make sure that happens um, moving ahead. Real quick, what are some of the programs you guys are looking forward to this summer? So we've got a whole host, in the next couple weeks, a whole host of stuff going on for Earth Day coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and then this summer, you will kick off all of our summer science camps. We're about 90% capacity right now. So if you've got young kids in the valley and want to get them into Walking Mountain summer science camps, give us a call or check out online, sign up. And then our backcountry hiking program, we're getting geared up for. So we've got our permits to go up Holy Cross, take group, uh, group up Mount Elbert again. Um, so those are what we're really getting geared up for this summer. Always great talking with you, Peter. Thanks for coming on the program. That's Peter Sunnison of the Walking Mountain Science Center. We've got to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got your weather forecast.